Greetings. This is the moment of mic check. Anyone else need to check the mic? Check, check, check. <laughs> Charge. <laughs> In large Wire part, transfer. It's sort of like, what are we actually doing again? Like the welcome back. Good to see all of you. Bob. Hey. Okay, that was just your, your moment of mic check. Uh, we'll hold for a few <laughs> more minutes to be able to get folks in here. Um, uh, please note that we have a different um, order today. Um, uh, so we have, we have flipped things all around. It's very exciting. All right, I was holding to be able to see if we could pick up quorum, but that's that's one, not necessary today, and two, it doesn't look like it's happening just yet, but um, today is going to be our normal tag updates. It'll be a good time. Greetings, Dims. Everybody back, Halen Harpy. <laughs> From QCon. I think I think the last people are now back. Yeah. So. All right, let's go ahead and kick us off. Um, welcome to our normal antitrust policy notice. Normal meeting logistics. You are here. You have made it. TOC members present today. This gets updated over in the TOC tracker over on the public. Um, Thing. So here's our agenda today. Um, I'll be chatting about the special election and then I'll hand it off to Dims and everyone else to be able to run through uh, tech updates. Note that new order that I talked about at the top of the call. So we have basically flipped things, run them backwards. So with that, um, come on. Oh, goodness. It is hanging here. There we go. That's what I was going for. All right, um, as you all know, we have had a TOC member step down and um, we have a special election open and these are open from your friendly neighborhood governing board. So if you have someone that wants to be nominated here, governing board can do it. Um, this closes at noon Pacific today um, with the hope of being able to have this person seated by July 1st. That is all that I had on this one. Any other questions? Okay, seeing no questions, everyone knows how these go. Good, good, good to see all of you. Um, and we will now move on and tag storage, come on in. Hello, um, it's been it's been a quiet couple of weeks, of course, because of uh, KubeCon 
Um, but a couple of uh, updates in terms of the projects. So CubeFS is in the process of being voted for. Um, if you haven't voted already, just a quick reminder that it's, uh, that it's waiting. Um, feel free to ask any questions if there are any. Um, Open EBS, we had some discussions around um, the next steps. I, I believe we're still waiting for a TOC sponsor on this. Um, so I think we're we're pausing until until somebody from the TOC is is able to uh, put their hand up on this one. Uh, and the curve storage system um, we recommended for sandbox, I believe it's in the list at the moment. Um, in terms of tag meetings, we are going to be following on with um, some of the work with the Cartographers project. Um, we're putting together some of the technical maturity model steps for the storage um, side of the world. Um, and tomorrow we have a presentation from the etcd project, um, which should be quite interesting. So uh, if anybody is interested in etcd, tomorrow is the time to join the tag call. Um, and finally, I wanted to I wanted to raise um, uh, uh, I guess a question around the tag governance. Um, when we originally uh, set up the SIGs and the tags, the charter called for a two year term on the chairs. Um, in in my case, and I'm sure this applies to some of the other chairs as well. Um, we've probably exceeded our term by quite a bit um and i guess the, <laughs> and, and and partly that's because of you know nobody else coming forward um uh and probably also a little bit of us not necessarily you know going out and actively looking for other chairs as well um but i guess the the question is how do we want to resolve that uh going forward do we want to um do we want to, I guess, renew terms or do we want to vacate? We, what we don't want to do, I guess, is have tags without shares because that would be um, not great. But uh, I'm looking, uh, I'd, I'd love to hear from Dims or Amy as to as to what, what we think the, the way forward should be for this. Well, I thought that the, I could be misremembering, which, which I do often, but I thought that that was, um, a tag specific uh, that those were that was decided individually by different tags in terms of the structure the like tag security had set up a structure i think for term lengths so so, so having had the pleasure of writing the operating model for the tags with quinton uh, what we had put into the overall um, operating model which applies to all the tags is that there are three co-chairs they're, they need to be approved by the by the TOC, and that each co-chair has a two-year term, and that there is a level of rotation so that you never rotate out all of the chairs at the same time. That was the original intention, but of course, um, in some cases, the, the the chairs haven't rotated or changed out um, because you know just finding enough volunteers, I guess, in in some cases. Um, so, yeah. That's basically where we are at the moment. There's there's some comments in chat which I think are, are relevant and worth being able to bring up because the ideal is in fact to be able to mentor a new chair and to be able to help like pull these things along. Um, I, I also recognize that um, frankly due to lack of time and all of that, that probably hasn't been as available. So I'd kind of like to be able to do something somewhat in between as far as like, yes, we can we can definitely go towards like being able to say, all right, we can do new chairs and that sort of thing, but also being able to follow tag securities model of being able to have more tech leads that are available that then step up and um, I might pass it like if, if mm -hmm. anyone disagree. Yeah, Emily, I, that's exactly where I was coming Hi. on in. Um, so Thank within, you. Within tag security, um, we have set it up such that you do not have to be a technical lead to become a co-chair. Part of the deliberation in the security tags co-chair selection process 
was largely around the value that each co-chair brought to the tag itself. So we always had somebody that was very community growth and development focused. We had someone that was very um, industry organization aligned. So they have a lot of memberships and a lot of industry organizations to kind of like bring that community into the tag. And then there was another one that primarily focused on the organization and execution of the tag governance structure to include triaging. Now, that's not going to work for everybody. Um, we do have a lot of active participants, but we also have a lot of ongoing projects and a somewhat documented mechanism to elevate individuals that lead projects into a technical leadership position and then nominating them. We recently ran through a study of the level of effort involved in organizing and executing our tag and versus how many folks in leadership positions are taking on that work. And we had to increase the amount of technical leads for that group because of that. A lot of this is mentoring new individuals to become projects project leads. A lot of it's going to be recruiting and making sure that they're set up for success with support um, and clearly defined goals and objectives for that project leadership. Um, I would encourage everybody to take a look at the processes that we have. Um, they're not perfect by any means. We're constantly refining them, but this is a, a ongoing problem that exists within the community. So we're very aware of it. No, I, and I, uh, and I, I think that's that's really great what's happening in the security tag and I think they you probably have um a little bit uh more perhaps a uh, uh, community interaction than than some of the other tags I think tags sort of differ differ in size we've been quite successful in terms of adding tech leads to to the storage tag for example and and we promoted one of the tech leads to a, a co-chair as well as part of this process but yeah nevertheless um for example my personal position is yeah i'm over my two-year term so i want to <laughs> i want to understand um if i should be standing down or if i should continue or 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 you know how, how do we deal with that so i would strongly recommend that um when your term is coming up to an end identifying someone in the community as a technical lead or with an industry that has an interest and mentoring them from a continuity perspective to showcase to them this is the level of effort this is the work that's involved are you interested i'd like to get you to a position to be able to do this that means showing up more to these meetings participating and provide that clear path um definitely if we, the earlier you can do that it's always going to be better uh, matt mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, chime in from tag observability and say, um, you know, we're, we're experiencing some challenges here uh, as well. Uh, and I, I wonder if we might consider uh, having uh, sort of a, a shared calendar of all of these um, elections or potential uh, place opportunities for folks to contribute and, and join uh, all of all of the tags or some of the tags uh, by by having like a cadence, maybe quarterly communication from from the TOC highlighting opportunities uh, in in the ecosystem of tags versus kind of you know maybe to augment the work that we're doing to try to find and source both co chairs and and tech leads um, uh, for our, our respective tags. Uh, you know the, the latter kind of relies on our personal connections or professional connections that already exist, uh, and perhaps some communication at a slightly higher altitude. Uh, you know. Kind of saying, hey, opportunities abound. You know that that, that might help cross pollinate and spread word more broadly um, as a proposal. Um, uh, Paris, do you want a voice? I would also add that while communications to a larger audience are excellent, 
nothing beats reaching out to somebody in your Slack channel and one-on-one -on -one following up with them and checking in with them. That is where we have had the most success in security tag is that one-on-one -on -one engagement. Hey, I see you joined our channel. Here are some easy issues. Could you take a look at this one? I'll follow up with you in two weeks to see if you have any questions about it or if you're able to contribute and then continuing to mentor that relationship forward. Uh, Ricardo, Bob, one of you want to voice? Yeah, I think um, in terms of tag runtime, I mean, we don't have a lot of participation in, in our meetings. So typically we have four and five and typically they're um, different people, you know, that show up every time. And yeah, I've been trying to reach out with some people, but, um, you know, it's not that easy to get interest on, on that specific tag. I think it's just not the, the more popular area of cloud native. So that's why I think uh, it's also been kind of challenging. So besides uh, maybe having some sort of ambassador uh, in the tag, it might be helpful if some other folks within the TOC umbrella or tag umbrella can help out um, maybe tag contributor strategy, uh, help out with some outreach and maybe have something that says, you know, look, we have these tags, you know, provide this participation or you know have some twitter type of announcement like you know we need some tag please participate so i think that might be helpful mm. so i'll plus one with general like social support for the tags um we did something similar in kubernetes with the like we literally have a upstream marketing team to help advertise this stuff um a lot of this was started by uh, Paris a few years ago. The the other thing, at least on the comms, or I'm sorry, not on the, on the comms, um, like I, I'd say like six months to your term is up is kind of like the final point where you'd be like, okay, I want to potentially stick with this for like another term, or I need to start really thinking about, you know, mentoring someone into to, to take my spot. Um, it's also like, I, I will say from personal experience, it's not always easy. Uh, I have like personally mentored a few people to try and take, take like my spot in as a Contribex lead. And they have all had to back out out of time commitments. Um, but more firmly defining the role, their responsibilities and creating additional roles to sort of distribute the load um, makes it a lot easier for people to potentially, you know, take on the, those positions or give them stepping stones to be able to, you know, eventually go up to those positions. Uh, any other thoughts from the TOC members? Uh, Katie, Matt. Okay. So uh, yeah, I do have one thought real quick, Tim's, um, you know, in, in all of this stuff, right. It's, it's a little bit of mentorship as culture as we go. Right. It, it's a culture thing to, to identify when somebody shows up and encourage them to come back or encourage them in what they're doing. Um, if somebody volunteers saying, you know, I might want to do this, I haven't done it before, write down their name and figure out how do you help them take a next step? I think it's, it's a culture thing that that we can all probably learn to do. Um, and the more people that we encourage that way, they have a good environment around, the more people they'll tell about it, the more people who can show up. So that's on top of already being useful, but um, being a, an environment where they can grow in, learn skills, engage in, it, it's about creating that tone, I think. And, and that doesn't come naturally to me. And so uh, I'm sure it doesn't to others. Uh, thanks, Matt. So uh, I, ha I have two thoughts. I, I generally agree with all the uh, forward-looking, positive uh, set of things that we need to do um, you know, over a period of time to cultivate fo new folks. Uh, for the short term, I would say um, you know, two things. One is there is a list of TOC contributors that I'm trying to redirect to tags. So uh, let me think about it a little bit more. Uh, I was chatting with Amy yesterday on uh, what we could be doing there, uh, how we could like channel mm -hmm. those set of people 
who self-identify that they are TOC contributors and like make it into a tag contributors. Um, so people can add their names. So we know exactly who to call on, right? Um, uh, so that is one. The other one is uh, for those folks uh, whose terms are uh, almost ending or already ended, I think we should just renew uh, what we need to do. So uh, let's follow the process that we have already uh, in terms of like notifying the TOC and getting uh, you know plus ones from the TOC members uh, and such to uh, at least get everything back on paper, uh, you know, restart uh, the terms essentially and not let it, uh, you know, just go uh, as it is happening right now. Uh, plus one to a calendar for sure for, uh, but yeah, so it, whether we want to maintain it at the tag level or whether we want to do it at the TOC level, um, I, I'm open to suggestions there. And Amy can probably help with that too. So, In the interest of time, I am going to move us on though. <laughs> I was, that was my next sentence. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tag Storage. Um, uh, we, we now have another problem to be able to work on, and we could, in fact, spend another hour on this. Um, so thank you, Alex, um, for providing this. So um, I will pass this off to security folks for whoever's going to be voiced for that. We may have lost them. I know that there was some conflicting issues that showed up this morning. Got it. Okay. So Emily, I will, I will allow you to be able to be voiced for this there. <laughs> um, so the secure software factory reference architecture paper is published. Um, they had good community feedback. Um, the next steps are to actually go through with the reference architecture itself. There was an open issue on the repo about being able to apply the reference architecture to CNCF projects. Um, there was a lot of really great discussion during KubeCon around that, and there was even more discussion on the issue. So if you're interested, go ahead and check that out. The Cloud Native Security White Paper version two is now available. We've got some key updated content in there to include ransomware because that is an, a growing topic especially in cloud computing environments um, so check that one out we also now have a nist controls mapping 853 rev 5 there is a lot of work that is being done in this space um, they have a version 2 deliverable that will be coming out that expands i believe beyond nist 853 rev 5 and potentially looks at testing some of these capabilities and then um, the cloud native security white paper version 1.0 audio recording is more or less available. Um, it's not officially public, but you can preview it using the link within the slide decks. This was put together in response to a lot of uh, community members uh, having long COVID and not being able to read documentation. They were far easier for them to listen to the documentation. So it's broken up into uh, small manageable chunks, or if you've got a lot of time, you can uh, listen to the entire file itself. It features voices across the tag security community. I know you had more, so go ahead. <laughs> Um, there's a few up and coming presentations, and this is just a list of some of them. I've had folks reach out to me since KubeCon that will be submitting for more presentations to the security tag. And we would like to welcome our new technical leads, Michael Lieberin, Marie, uh, Marina Mora, and Ragashri. They are fantastic individuals, and we are happy to have them to help take on the workload of managing such a large tag. All right, thank you very much. We'll move on. Oh, okay. Actually, questions? Anything else before I move on? Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask yes. if there are any issues uh, that we need to work on uh, on the TOC side to help uh, security tag. Um, I think overall the tag is doing well. I think they have reached a point um, where we, they've generated a lot of their research and the paper oriented um, needs that from the community it's a matter of updating them at this point and sustaining them with the exception of the auditability portion of the charter that's where the controls 
group comes in. The next steps, I believe that their group can be more largely successful in is a lot more of that technical implementation. So the reference to our architecture, partnering with the foundation to ensure all CNCF projects have the associated supply chain mechanisms that they need to provide a greater level of assurance that our CNCF projects were built in a secure fashion and then being able to attest that. So that is probably the, the largest next leap in those two areas, auditability and actual application of the recommendations from our papers. Thank you. Lovely, thank you. All right, tag run time, come on in. Right. <clears throat> so I have some updates in terms of um, projects and presentations. So the containers and runtime space, uh, we have uh, this project called Bumblebee and it provides a uh, EBPF and, and kind of like Docker, so kind of like a runtime. Uh, so they're gonna have a presentation on June 16th. And in terms of workloads, a um, uh, series of projects um, are, present, are presenting and have presented. So op Open Function is one of them. This provides end-to-end -end serverless. Uh, they had a presentation on April 7th. Another couple of projects that uh, are sort of bundled together, turnbuckle and pallet. Uh, they're from the folks in the open source community at Siena. And they basically provide constraints to workloads on Kubernetes. So ability to constrain pods based on CPU, memory, and even networking. So they presented on May 5th. Multi is another project that allows users to provision infrastructure uh, to multiple cloud environments using a common language. Uh, so they use Terraform underneath it. So in their language is very similar to Terraform. They did have a presentation in our last meeting uh, this week. Well, sorry, last week. And uh, finally, Ray and Cube Ray, uh, two projects that go together. Ray is a um, distributed computing framework, and Cube Ray is its Kubernetes operator. And they will have a presentation on July 7th. And in terms of activities in the tag, uh, our batch system initiative working group uh, continues to meet uh, twice a month. And they're continuing. They're continuing to iron out the details for their charter. And in terms of KubeCon EU, we had that tag runtime session. We had some good attendance. And finally, the Kubernetes IoT working group is working on migrating to the CNCF because they want to expand their their scope. So they not necessarily want to focus on Kubernetes. So they want to. Uh, uh, beyond the, the CNCF umbrella. So that's in progress. And yeah, and then I think the other aspect is the, you know, what we were talking about. So um, I'd like to go ahead and review my co-chair term. So I'll, I'll be doing that in the next uh, uh, few days. That's all for the updates. Any questions? I think that's probably the right for path forward as far as being able to keep continuity with the tags. And then also we need to be able to have a little bit more, yeah, like mentoring groups. There's lots of conversation about that. So thank you. Yep, yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Anything else that people wanted to be able to bring up around tag runtime? All right. Observability, come on in. Hello, everybody. Um, happy post KubeCon. <laughs> uh, so I, I'll briefly recap the last couple of meetings we had. Um, you know, the, the, the back in mid-April, uh, in our second Tuesday meeting, we, we talked briefly about the Landscape Graph project, which is still nascent um, and, and could be useful to all tags, really, um, as well as, um, you know, framing out what a sandbox um, tag annual review, not, not a formal review, but just building a calendar of, you know, when, when, when folks or when different projects uh, have entered different phases, starting, starting with the sandbox um, and just 
providing some visibility and ability for folks to find each other within the domain. Um, on the 16th uh, at KubeCon, uh, there was an in-person meeting. Um, Richie, are you on the call? Uh, I think he's on vacation. Um, uh, I wasn't in attendance in, in Spain. Uh, uh, however, there's a bunch of notes that are linked. Um, there was no recording from that, but it was well attended uh, with a lot of lively uh, discussion. Uh, most of the time, I understand, was spent on uh, the Observe K8s project, which has been moving along in the recent uh, months and now has a fully working Observe K8s demo uh, that's, that Michael Hasenblas and Henrik Rex and some others have contributed to. Uh, and there's a link there for, for details. Uh, obviously, our 17th May was canceled. Uh, and our meeting today, which immediately follows this meeting, uh, the top of the agenda is, well, a recap of, uh, from Bartek of uh, the meeting from KubeCon in Spain. Uh, but uh, the big ticket item, if you will, is adding profiling as a signal to open telemetry. And I provided some links there as well. Uh, there was a kickoff meeting that was very well attended uh, last Friday uh, with um, on the order of dozens uh, of profiler developers uh, kind of uh, tuning in and contributing. And, and there's an active discussion there uh, that's healthy. So we're going to devote some time to that um, in today's meeting. Uh, as, as, as we briefly discussed before, we are looking for more tech leads uh, and, and or uh, co-chairs uh, to, to nominate. And, and uh, I think sourcing uh, the funnel, if you will, for us has been something of a challenge. Um, and, and we'll follow up with some of the things we talked about uh, today happily. Um, and then lastly, uh, we are also looking uh, at building out the schedule for the summer of uh, project presentations uh, and or webinars. Uh, so uh, please do reach out if you have suggestions uh, or, or feel free to join us in the Slack channel uh, with any, any proposals or suggestions. Uh, that's it. Uh, are there any questions? Looks like no direct questions. I'm not seeing anything in chat. Give it a moment. All right. Thank you, Matt. Tag Network, you're up. Right. Uh, a couple of things since we last met, I think. Um, we had a presentation from Araki Mesh, uh, whom I, I believe they've submitted their sandbox proposal. <clears throat> we have a proposal from Istio uh, for incubation. Um, and um, Dave is helping organize diligence and hopefully they'll, we'll get them scheduled to present as well. Uh, the most active working group within TAG Network is the Service Mesh Working Group. Um, a couple of updates. Uh, last time we met, which was just this last week, uh, one of the participants from uh, from Cisco was, well, asking an old question about details of deployment models and things around best practices. And those questions really fell into, or that they were in context of the service mesh performance dashboard um, that's coming out of the service mesh performance project. And what tests should, the questions are like, what tests should be run? What scenarios are, are typical? What's, what are good representative workloads? And, and those types of questions. Um, the CNCF had recently done, or done a survey, uh, a service mesh centric survey not too long ago. And that, that survey tends to focus on um, level of adoption. And you know, you, from there, you can kind of derive most popular service mesh and that kind of a thing. Um, there's, a, there's a double click on, that would be helpful to, well, hopefully to everybody about more specific, more technical specifics about the way that these service meshes are deployed, um, best practices around their use, things that would be useful input into the service mesh performance dashboard. And so there was just a survey, a, a draft survey being, or a survey being drafted that the tag would like to work with uh, the TOC or the CNCF staff on potentially getting out another survey to augment it to you know, get, get in there. Um, 
part of the Service Mesh Performance Project um, at this Service Service Mesh Con EU um, in coordination with well, a couple of the maintaining organizations of service mesh performance. There's a new formula being um, published called Meshmark, um, and I'll I'll forego a description of it. But uh, but that was an, an update from from that project since last we spoke. So just a um, a new index, new way of of measuring uh, and characterizing the value of your cloud native infrastructure. That's about it. Uh, LFX and GSOC, I think they, they, they've kicked off. So there's a number of the projects within, within the tag that are participating. Uh, Lee, I was just curious, uh, what kind of work do the um, you know, projects, uh, the, the GSOC and LFX projects uh, folks end up doing? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's um, being familiar with a few of these. The one of the GSOC interns is working directly on that service mesh performance dashboard, um, and they just presented this last Thursday their their update. So you, if you go to the dashboard, you can tell it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. So that's a good example. In the past, another had worked on like the SMI, conform SMI conformance uh, dashboard and kind of the, the tooling around performing that conformance. Um, another one is there's, uh, well, there's a, a, a play.meshery.io. There's a, a, the hope for a cloud native playground in which people can go and in, in context of Meshery in that project, they can learn uh, they can deploy any number of meshes and kind of walk through learning labs on understanding the capabilities of this cloud native infrastructure. And so that's another example of uh, work that yeah, yeah, LFI. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Lee. Moving on, we've got tag contributor strategy. <coughs> Howdy. Um, <Hello. coughs> um, unsurprisingly, Shoemaker's children like, um, like many other tags, um, we are working on our um, uh, contributor uh, pipeline. Um, the um, and as a result, uh, this last KubeCon was the culmination of an awareness campaign um, uh, engineered and spearheaded by Catherine Paganini. Um, this included uh, multiple sessions, including a keynote maintainer circle, maintainer session, governance session, and interviews. Um, this has already generated some extra interest in the tag. Of course, a big part of the goal of this awareness campaign was to make the projects aware that there are resources and help available um uh and we've heard from some projects since then um the um for uh, recent activity around kubecon um uh we're redoing how we document the templates um and the first one of those is the contributing uh template um uh to make the documentation clearer um uh and all of the templates are going to be redocumented this way um, I sent an email to the TOC mailing list uh, today um, requesting comment on um, a mentoring uh, working group. Uh, this mentoring working group um, uh, was the request um, of CNCF staff and contractors who are already supervising mentoring activity across the CNCF, um, as well as planning new programs, and they need sort of an official place within the CNCF hierarchy for that to live. Um, and tag contributor strategy was the obvious place. Um, so please comment on that and then we'll take a vote after we're done commenting. Um, as always, um, please encourage projects to reach out to our tag when you provide feedback and due diligence. Um, a TOC member recently did that for the Flux project and they came to us asking for advice on writing new governance, um, which I think worked out for everybody. Um, so again, um, when you find that projects have problems recruiting contributors, uh, forming governance, having clear and transparent processes, et cetera, please refer them to us for assistance in making that happen. Thanks.
Any questions? Uh, thanks, Josh. Um, th especially thanks for the uh, flux. I think we were uh, we unblocked it this morning, and we actually had Matt Farina, um, you know, uh, step up as a sponsor too. So thank you. Yep, it's what we're it's what we're here for, right? The whole idea is to to move the projects along because most of them get stuck simply because they don't know how to proceed. No, this is great. Thank you. Any other um, questions? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that said, tag contributor strategy, of course, is looking for more people to be involved. Um, part of the idea of adding new working groups is to expand the number of activities that people might be interested in participating in. Um, I, and among other things, I have overstayed my two years as chair. Um, so um, I am looking for a replacement chair. Seems to be a theme of this particular call. So thank you. Um, dropping towards app delivery. Come on in. Okay, uh, I will. Yeah, yes. I will give an update. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, welcome back from KubeCon, everyone. Uh, so like, uh, so we don't have any meeting last week because of the KubeCon, no, no, sorry, like like two weeks before. Uh, but like, uh, so I'll give an update on the, just like what's happening in last month. Uh, that w the projects we reviewed and the work we have done, like first of all for the projects, like there are a couple of projects that presented in our uh, tech, and also we sponsor one of them into uh to to help them move into incubation, which is Captain. It's in public voting period, so please vote your opinions. And other than that, uh, we also have open feature and open cruise, uh trying to get into CNCF. Uh, open Cruise is trying to uh, move to incubation and Open Feature is uh, also being donated to as a sandbox uh, project. Um, so, and we also have Mist.io uh, just getting uh, presented as well. They want it. So let me give a brief introduction what each project does. Like Captain is a uh, like CICD tooling uh, focus on uh, sec security and, and like, yeah, the and SLO thing. An open feature is a feature flag that that's a open standard that 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 uh, define an API for products like launch darkly and those kind of thing. An open cruise is uh is a, a Kubernetes workload uh workloads like like just like deployment but more advanced. And Mr. IO is is very much like cross plane but with its own API. So if you are interested, you can uh join our tech meeting and and also like discuss them with us as well. Uh, other than that, like on the working group side, um, we have three updates. So first of all, we we have the cooperative delivery working group uh, have finished the Edward has finished the evergreen charter. Uh, in this uh, in the slides doc, um, actually you you need to get in get the slides and uh, uh, and put get the and click the link. But definitely those things are available in our uh, our meeting meeting like notes as well. So, so you can definitely find them in there as well. So, and other than that, like we also have uh, are planning a operator white paper version two. Uh, previously, we have published version one operator white paper, but like so much things have been <laughs> have been changing uh, since then. Like for example, there are new trends like multi cluster and observability and GitOps those kind of thing being added to operators. So we are trying to add those things and, and, and just refresh what operator does. And that's why uh, we have started drafting a new doc for that. Uh, and we are also, uh, and, and we are also like uh, planning a multi-tenancy white paper. Um, currently we are gathering people to discuss what, what does multi-tenancy means and what, what problems it solves. Because it's so important, like, like there are so many people just providing a uh, Kubernetes cluster on top of one apparent Kubernetes cluster. Uh, this is a very, very common pattern. Uh, we want to uh, collect, we want to build collective uh, intelligence and and just share our knowledge on that and, and build best practices. Uh, and for the upcoming uh, meetings, we also ha we have some projects going to present as well. One, is, one of them is RulePack. It's a generic installer for Kubernetes apps. And another thing is uh, KN Funk. Uh, 
it's it's something that uses a uh, build packs and K native to automatically like like run your code in, in containers. Uh, so that's all the updates. Uh, any questions? Okay. Oh, this is great. Thank you. Cool. Thank you too. Thank you, App Delivery. All right, we're coming in fine on time. Assuming this moves, come on. No, too fast. Um, we have our projects to be able to review and not sure why it's holding on us, but um, I kind of wanted to be able to do a rundown here um, of, of things that are currently in voting, um, which we can see, but I know that we have a lot of um, projects currently sitting out there. So I'm going to pass towards, um, we'll start at the top, Cloud Custodian. I've got Ricardo on the line. That's me. Yeah. yeah. So custodian is, is actually ready. So I'll send the all the comments uh, internally and then I think we are very close to open it up. And I can do start manager as well right after. <laughs> Sorry, can I break the, the order? No, no, that's fine. That's fine. There's, there's not really an order. It's just like that there is a list. Please go through the list. <laughs> <All right. laughs> So for search manager, we are very advanced in the due diligence and I'm now I've scheduled the end user interview. So yeah, I think both will have a lot of focus until the end of the month. Awesome, thank you. Um, passing to Dave, who is not on the calls, so that won't work. Um, we will have to hold for being able to get the uh, uh, artifact hub updates in here. Um, so key cloak. Aaron, if you're with us. Hey, Amy, sorry Yay! about that. Yay, you were finding button. mute. <laughs> trying to find the mute button amongst all of the different tabs and windows. Um, yeah, I don't have an update on this yet. I, I'm, I hope to by the end of the week. All right, that is completely fine. Um, yeah, and the rest are basically like with Dave or in voting, so. Um, Unless any of the uh, projects in graduation have, have updates here. I am waiting on one final adopter interview for Spiffy and Spire. The due diligence document is near complete, just waiting on the results of that interview and then be able to send it for a review. Lovely. And I know there is one missing here. Flux got a response yep. this morning. Um, simply because like that happened before, like <laughs> slides closed at the uh, uh, end of day yesterday. So now we have a new one. Um, so thank you, Matt. All right, Dims, any other items business that we didn't cover that we needed to? Yes. Um, so if you look at uh, the CNCF TOC mailing list, uh, you would have seen um, an announcement for or a request for people to engage uh, in a, a code of conduct working group. So um, please uh, read that email. Um, the idea here is, um, uh, you know, currently the C uh, code of conduct process is run by the CNCF staff. So it would be really good to have a community oriented uh, set of folks um, that are doing this uh, in conjunction with staff, um, you know, very similar to how the Kubernetes code of conduct works, uh, you know, similar to that where uh, the the Kubernetes code of contact is taking reports and doing stuff and, uh, you know, getting back with, uh, uh, you know, how to handle certain situations and, uh, and whatnot. So similar to that, we want to do something here um, in the CNCF level also, going through some of the, uh, you know, why we don't yet have one um, kind of discussions. We realized that, um, you know, it would be a good idea to actually have one of these, um, you know, at the CNCF TOC level, so uh, we can support our um, communities better, um, you know, than how we are doing today. So, uh, if you're interested in this work, uh, please join up. Um, you know, send an email to Taylor. Um, you know, the steps are detailed in the email, but I'm just voicing here that uh, there is an effort in progress, and we had a couple of uh, discussions during KubeCon as well. And if anybody's interested, we can update you on what has happened so far and 
where we are headed and things like that too uh, on a separate call um, or you know we can do it one on one or uh, in a group setting as well so uh, if you're interested in this topic please step up and uh, you know help any questions here once going twice uh, that was easy so essentially this is a collaboration between cnc of gb and the cnc of toc uh, because both of us have to sign off on um, uh, how this is going to work and this is the first time we are trying to do this in public usually it doesn't happen so that is a very good sign of um, you know how we are trying to do this uh, that's all i had thank you i will make one plug for next um, TOC meeting is going to be annual reviews. So any projects out there that have gotten pings around getting your annual review in, please do it if you intend to do it this time. Thank you. Jim, so I have a question. So yeah. um, what is the, um, the cadence of the, the meetings for this working group? Or I guess it hasn't been finalized yet, right? Yeah, so. it hasn't been finalized yet. The first step is to identify the people uh, who will be working on this. And then, uh, you know, hopefully we'll follow a community process similar to what we do elsewhere, where uh, people will, um, you know, swarm on a doodle uh, or something like that to figure out what times will work and what cadence will work. Um, you know, they can decide on the in their first meeting. The whole idea is to get a couple of chairs and, and the people who are going to do the work together and like unleash them to actually go do uh, the things that they need to do. Uh, in a community fashion. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Good question. We'd love to have an answer for it. We will. <laughs> yes. And we don't want to decide too many things before the fact, right? Like, so right. let the people do the doing the work uh, decide how they do the work. Aaron, anything from your side? Oh, okay, you were, you were unmuted, not on purpose. Okay. Yeah, I, I did have a I did have a question that was coming from the community around this um, working group for sustainability or green. I mean, I know there's a working group, but there's kind of a push to be a little more formal about that and create a tag. What is our our appetite for that? Since it's still pretty early stage, it, it seems to be getting momentum from every single vertical in the industry. So, is it something we we want to look at doing? Uh, the sustainability, right? Yep. Okay. Um, so uh, the, the typical question I ask here is like, uh, not being a tag, is it affecting their day-to-day -day work right now? Um, if not, you know, I would say, you know, get some, some initial wins uh, uh, under your belt and then come up with things that you can't do right now because you're a working group versus a tag and then uh, revisit it at that time. And that was kind of my feedback as well. I just wanted to see what the rest of the TOC and community kind of thinks. And Bob, obviously you agree. I see your comment. Emily, did you have something to add there? Yeah, when we had the initial discussion with them, it was largely around scope because environmental sustainability is such a broad area that we wanted to have something a little bit more concrete in what the potential deliverables of the working group would look like. And then based off of the determination of those deliverables, um, make a decision as to whether or not it's more suitable as a tag. No, I agree. And it's kind of one of those things like security. I think you can agree where it's in every little part, Emily, it's not able to operate in a silo. And I think that's why they were yeah. looking at the formalization, but I think it's completely fair to say, you know, as, as many of these started from a white paper framing, what does that mean? The size and the scope and moving it more into, you know, a formal tag of executing and interacting with these different ones. So I'm, I'm fine taking that feedback back to the community. Okay, great. Thanks, Karen. Thank you all. Anything else we needed to cover today? Um, no, not for me. Thank you. All right. Then I will just send everyone back into their day. It's good to see all of you. Bye, everyone. See you for annual reviews next time. Thank Yay. you. Bye. 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 Bye, all.